Hello everyone, welcome back to eTech Facebook Live Fridays. Apologies for the late start, technical difficulties. I'm actually doing the stream from home today as our office is covered in ice, or not the office, but the roads are, so it's made it difficult to go in. But either way, we're bringing the stream to you and we're kicking off this year's series with merchandising your repair shop. Today, the main focus is going to be what you should be carrying in your storefront as far as upsell items go, how to display it, and uh, also just some other tips that would help with building that basket for the customer. So to kick it off, I'm gonna switch over to a stream of our website. And I had some pages preloaded just to show some, some examples, but the categories I would break these down into are tempered glass, cases, and chargers. So for tempered glass, I'm gonna go to, um, our accessories page here and this is how most people will display them as well it just kind of shows a breakdown of each we have it listed by Apple and Samsung Apple is going to contain all your iPhone tempered glass as well as your iPad tempered glass uh, tempered glass is a, a no-brainer to carry in your store it's a very high margin um, low cost product and who doesn't want to get additional protection on their screen after they pay to get it repaired um, and Kind of leading into one of the the building your basket things one thing we recommend that our customers do as well as um, ourselves if we ever have walk-ins that come in is offer some type of discount if they are bundling uh, an accessory such as tempered glass something like half off or 10 percent off you can choose the discount based on your pricing but some kind of incentive uh pricing wise to get them to add that onto their their basket um, as well as the protection that goes with that. Uh, so that, this is tempered glass again. There's a lot of the iPhone things. Now, the thing that you may run into is a customer comes into your shop with say a Galaxy A70 or A71. It's very hard to stock a tempered glass for every single model of every phone. It's just one, you may not have the room for it and two, that, that comes with that, that high cost. So what we recommend in replacement of carrying one for every single model. Now, don't get me wrong, for the iPhone and iPad ones, the common repair models, it's good to have those because you know you're gonna go through them. But for everything else, what we recommend is Protection Pro. This is something that we sell um, and we also offer uh, to put on for our customers that come in as well. Um, it's great because it's on-demand screen protection. So someone can't, comes in with that one-off A-Series or LG or Google Pixel that you don't have a tempered glass for, you can print one on the spot. Um, and all you need is the, the machine. This is the um, medium sized version, which will do uh, up to tablets. Uh, there's a smaller version as well. And all you need for that is these films. So you buy the film and this film right here in particular, the small could be an iPhone 6 plus. It could also be a uh, LG K10. Again, just as an example, it, it's not made until you print it with the machine. So if you don't already have Protection Pro, I highly recommend doing it just for that universal factor. Um, when it comes to providing accessories for your shop. And also, it's very good protection. Nothing against tempered glass, but what typically happens with tempered glass is someone drops it and it chips. Um, that chip will spread, it gets worse. We've all seen those phones where someone hands it to us and it looks just like the tempered glass is holding on for dear life. Um, protection Pro won't do that. It's a rubberized material that when it, I guess uh, the best way to explain it is when impact hits the screen or when there's an impact on the screen, it helps distribute that force um, through that elastic material that it has on there versus just chipping because the tempered glass has nowhere to send that force. It'll just crack wherever it gets to. So um, great protection and again, it's universal. So it's a great thing to bring on if you don't already have it. So that covers the tempered glass and screen protection area. The next thing is cases. So same thing here. It's difficult to stock a case for every single model of phone. What we recommend is at least covering the iPhones, and if in your area you have certain models that are more popular, you can bring those on as you go. But what you don't wanna do is order every case under the sun and just have it sit there forever. Because one, it's just, it's capital that's tied up in inventory that most likely won't move. Um, so keeping it to the, the popular models is our best recommendation. And what you have here, um, this is actually, if you go to our accessories um, menu item and then go to cases, this is the cases section we have. MyBat is a really good brand we've brought on recently, I would say in the last six months or so. Um, 
it's high quality product for a value price. And you notice on mine it's showing um, $25 for the cases. When you sign in with your uh, account level, your repair shop level, you actually get a discount. So that's not what you're paying. That's just the recommended retail um, that we're showing on the site. So if you don't already have an account set up with us, definitely recommend doing that, bringing these cases on and selling them to your customers because again, if they get their screen repaired and they paid upwards of 100, 200, even 300 dollars sometimes for these newer models, what's a $25 case to help protect that investment? Because even though the tempered glass or a protection pro or protect the front, the back is glass. And if you're not doing back glass repair right now, um, you'd want to offer some type of protection for that um, just so they, they don't have that happen to them, their back glass break. But these cases, again, we offer a variety from the iPhone 6 series up to the 13 series. Um, they're all listed here, so check that out um, when you get a chance. And then, so that covers our cases section. Not going to go too in-depth there, but again, it's good to have some type of case there. Color options vary. There's probably millions of different options out there, but you want to at least have one for each of these common models so you can offer that to your customer when they have that repair done. Um, and then last on the list as far as accessories go that we recommend carrying would be chargers. So this is lightning chargers here, um, which again is going to cover all our iPhones from the what, 5 series up. Um, and then we have, uh, or sorry, this was lightning cables. And then we have our USB-C and uh, mini USB here. So this is going to be all of your newer Androids, uh, your, what, is it, what did it start at? The Galaxy S8 and newer, and then your newer iPads that have um, USB-C. So that's going to be your Pro 11s, your um, iPad Pro 12.9 Gen 3 and newer. Uh, and again, probably any new iPad that comes out is going to have a USB-C port, um, at least the Pro series and the Air 4 as well. Uh, so that's cables. And the reason cables are good is customer comes in and they're saying they're having charging issues. I'm sure you've experienced this before where it isn't always something with the phone. It's the cable, especially if they bring the charger and it looks like it was chewed on by their dog. It's good to offer that cable replacement um, and to have that in stock so you can do that right then and there. It's also good to offer higher quality cables. Um, the other thing that you might run into is the customer bought a charger from like a gas station or something. Um, we usually refer to those, at least in, in our repair shop, as TriStar Killers because when you don't have a good quality cable that regulates that current going from the, the block to the phone, it can damage components on the board such as the TriStar chip, which regulates charging. So if that's damaged, then you can replace the battery, the, the charging port, but your phone still won't charge because it's a chip problem. And if you do offer that type of repair, that TriStar repair, this should be an easy add-on because the chances are their charger is what caused the damage to that phone. So prevent that damage from happening again because board level repair isn't often cheap. So uh, it's better to, again, buy a $10 charger and avoid that issue from happening. Um, we offer a variety of qualities and grades here. Um, what we typically recommend is something that says MFI on it because that has the made for iPhone designation on there that has the chip control in there to prevent damage to the TriStar. So just keep an eye out for that. Um, and you can tell a quality cable by the feel of it when you have it. If when you bend it, it, it doesn't retain its or it, it doesn't retain that bend shape, it kind of bends back. That's good quality cable um, because it won't fray over time, especially on the ends where the connectors are. That's where we see the majority of the damage. But uh, again, just chargers is a good thing to have as an add-on, especially if you have that customer with a charging issue. Um, or another example, say a customer is in your shop wanting to buy a phone. Um, if you sell the refurbished phone options in your store, adding that basket of a case, a screw reductor and a cable kind of sets them up for at least a year, if not years of use without having to go and buy something else. So that is the what to carry. And now I'm coming up on the nine minute mark of our stream. so. What I want to finish this off with is how to display this stuff because that's a big part of merchandising. I'm going to switch over to just an image of what our lobby looks like with some of the product we have on display. The majority of this is a good example, but there are some items I want to point out that are things that, when as far as merchandising are concerned, make sure that you keep an eye on so they don't happen. The first one is an example of just a tag not being straightened up. Um, can't point right now because this is actually a background, but 
That top row on the left where it says accessories, the item on the far right, that tag's not straightened up. And that can happen a number of ways. That could happen when you're restocking or if a customer goes and grabs something from the peg, they're not always going to keep in mind the, uh, the best look for your shop. So this does require constant monitoring and resetting. I would recommend at least beginning a shift and end a shift, if not a couple times throughout the day. Um, and just keep an eye on, on your uh, storefront. Customers may grab something off the peg, put it somewhere else or not put it back. Again, that happens. Um, if you have locking pegs, you're set because they can't take that off. But if you don't, you want to reset that so at least the next customer sees that same presentation um, that the first one did before this, uh, the tag was messed up or something was moved around. A second item would be something that's not priced. You always want to have your most up-to-date pricing on your, your items up there because they'll see that. That answers a lot of the questions they're going to bring to you of how much does this cost. And if they have a, an issue with pricing up there, say you have it listed for $15.99 and they're like, oh, this is too much, you can offer a discount if you'd like to seal the deal. 10, 15% off. It's a couple bucks here and there. It usually covers taxes, but it's a good incentive for them to take that and purchase it versus just putting it back on the shelf where it's going to sit. Um, another big item too is that's where you would recommend bundling something. If you offer multi-accessory bundles, so say they buy a case, a tempered glass, and a charger, give them a bundle discount off the whole set. So get another example of something you can offer. Um, another item that you don't want to do is have any um, empty spots. So on the far right over here, it may be a little hard to see, but that top row and then the bottom row, there's two empty places. If that ever happens and you don't have the stock to replenish it of that particular item, you can call. You can do what we call flexing. So you would take the item next to it and flex it over to that empty spot, or you can go down either way. Um, but you want to basically fill that because holes on the wall don't look great. Um, it kind of presents an image of you don't have a lot of inventory, um, which to some customers that may not help with the peace of mind of getting repaired, the repair done with you or even purchasing something at your shop. So flexing is a great idea if you ever do run into a spot where you're out of inventory for a certain item. Um, and again, just a general layout here. You can set up a planogram if you'd like. That's what a lot of retailers do. Um, I have a little bit of a background working with some retailers, so that's kind of where this setup came from. But the general idea is you want clear lines horizontally and vertically aligned, um, at least horizontally whenever possible, um, vertically as well. You're gonna get items, as you can see, the tempered glass for the iPads, they get a little bit thicker. So for one iPad tempered glass, it's two iPhone above it. Um, but you just wanna work with that because clear lines also help with presentation. It just gives a better organized look to the front and it doesn't look like things are just thrown up there. Um, as far as where you live, where you have everything out on your wall, you may have um, slat walls like this with pegs, different areas. You can do it by model, you can do it by type, like I mentioned, cases, tempered glass, and chargers. It's really up to you for whatever space you have. I can't plan this out specifically to your space without knowing what it is, so just take a look at your space and kind of map it out. I'd recommend writing this down first before you go put it up there because it gets super annoying putting pegs up, taking them down over and over. If you plan for this, you don't have to do that. You can draw it out, kind of list out where everything's gonna go in your shop. And if you wanna to get to the planogram stage where you write down what SKUs where on a piece of paper, on a spreadsheet, something like that, great. But at least start off with a handwritten thing. It doesn't have to be perfect to kind of have that plan before you do the live version on your walls. Um, as far as how to display it, that's everything I had on that last point. Um, and I believe, the last item I had, this isn't really merchandising for your product that's out there, but we've noticed that a lot of repair shops do have displays in their lobby. You might have a TV or a couple TVs. What are you displaying on those, I guess is the point here. Big things to offer are your your discounts and your um, pricing. So let the, the customer know what you do offer. So while they're sitting there in your lobby, if you're doing a repair on their iPhone, they may not know you do iPad repair. Have that listed up there. Um, you can have some, the, your bundles listed as well. Buy uh, two cases and get the tempered glass free. Or, again, just some examples out there. Get creative with these things because I have noticed that the repair shops that, that are outlasting the others that are turning in record months and they just they keep going to the next level are the ones that are creative with offers. They're the ones that are bundling things, that are giving discounts where, where possible. I'm not saying discount the world because you have to make money too, 
but there are certain areas where if you bundle things up, there's enough margin in there to give the customer 10 or 15% while you still take home 40 plus points in margin. So just some things to think through. But that is all I had for today's stream. I went a little over the, the 10 minute mark I was shooting for, but just wanted to kick this off and let everyone know it's back every Friday at 12 p.m. We're going to be doing these streams. We have some pretty good content already slated out for future weeks. If you have anything you'd like to see, let us know in the comments of this video once it posts to our Facebook account or just send us an email or a message throughout the week. We'd love to answer any questions that you guys may have um, is relating to your business, to tools, to accessories, to repairs. We're going to cover it all in the upcoming stream. So thanks everyone for joining today. See everyone on next week's stream and stay warm out there. I know in Texas at least we got some pretty cold weather so uh, and I believe the rest of the country is kind of like that too. So. Uh, stay warm and hopefully everything thaws out soon so we can get back to selling some stuff. Have a great weekend.